So I used to think layer masks were really confusing. And over the last couple of years though, I find myself using them more and more. And in this video, I just want to talk to you guys about a couple of ways that I like to use them in my own process and ways that you might could use them in yours. They really add a lot of flexibility to your process, being able to go back and undo things you did an hour ago without all the work in between. They really just give you creative options you wouldn't have without a mask. So that's what I want to talk about today. And you can use just about any app for this. I'm going to be using Photoshop, but Clip Studio, Procreate, Krita, just about all the major art apps have these things these days. So here's some of my favorite mask pro tips. Masking pro tips? Pro tips using a mask. Whatever the name of this video is. <laughs> Hey there, my name is Kurt. I am a professional combo colorist, and this channel is focused on making you better at color, making colors simpler, less scary, all of those things. Okay, so real quick before we get into the mask tricks, you need to know how a mask works in case you don't. So I have this painting here, the Mona Lisa, by a, a Leonardo da Vinci, who seems to be pretty good. So to show you guys how a mask works, I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm just going to fill this with like a nice deep blue color like that. Now, every app has a different way of creating a mask, but in Photoshop, you just click on the little symbol down here. It looks like a rectangle with a hole in it, okay? So just click on that, and now we've added a mask to this layer. Now, there's, there's two separate things you can click on over here. You've got the layer itself, okay? Now, I can paint on this if I wanted to, or I can go to my mask. Now, the way a mask works is very simple. The pixels are white. You're going to see the contents of the layer, like we are right now. The pixels are all white. So we're seeing this blue layer on top. If I fill it all with black, you'll notice that it hides the contents of this blue layer. That's all a mask does, is it hides things and shows things. Now if I choose about 50% and fill it with that gray, then it's we're seeing about half of this, this blue color here. It's kind of like it's uh, like 50% opacity now. And all the things that you can do on a regular layer, you can do on a mask. So if I fill this with white again, now we're seeing our, our blue here. Now I could go get a brush and choose black. And I can start painting with black and I want you to see, look how good of a painter I am. Okay, so all this is doing, this black is now removing, it's not actually removing, it's hiding these blue pixels. Okay, I can change the brush. We can fill all this in. Okay, so black hides, white shows. Now in Photoshop, when you're on a mask, you can actually color pick and see the difference here. So like if I color pick, color pick, if I color pick this area, it's showing white because it's showing the blue. If I color pick, <laughs> I can't talk today, color pick this, then we're seeing the black. So I can go back and forth. I can pull this back in. I can choose this, pull it back in. So got a lot of flexibility there just with being able to paint on a mask. That's all a mask does. It hides things and shows things. I can use any brush. I can use selection tools in conjunction with my painting. So I've got some artwork here from uh, Rebecca Isaacs. It's an uh, amazing artist who was kind enough to let me use this in a video. And so in this example, I've done a little bit of rendering on her arm just to show you guys an example here. Don't look too closely at my rendering. So I had a book recently where there was a character that was standing in front of some like bars, like some prison bars. And it was going to be casting a shadow the way that the light source was established. So instead of trying to determine where the bars would go exactly and, and do that while I was rendering, rendering, which would have been kind of difficult. Instead, I just put a mask on the layer with my rendering, choose black, and then I can paint with black into these areas. And you think, well, that's cool, but you could just use the eraser, right? If I wanted to and just erase those sections. I could, but what happens later on if an editor says, you know what, I think it will look better if the light source is over here and those bars kind of look distracting. So can you get rid of those? Well, that doesn't sound any fun if I've already erased them because I now I can't go back, okay? That's kind of the beauty of using a mask is it's a non-destructive way of editing is what they call it. And they call it non-destructive because nothing is destroyed, it's only hidden. So all I've got to do is go back with white on my mask and paint that away. Or maybe I wanted the lines to go a different direction later and I decided that, yeah, I really didn't follow those curves very well and they should have gone this way. With a mask, I can go back at any point and make these adjustments without having to worry about losing any work. Now, I don't know if this next trick has a name. I like to call it like inverse rendering or maybe negative rendering, but uh, you can use a mask for this too. So, so I'm gonna make a, a new layer on top and I will call this shadows. 
so you guys can follow along. I'm just going to select the contents of, of, of all of this stuff. And you can just control or command click on the picture and that will select the contents of those layers. So this is basically selecting all the foreground here. I'm going to fill this with uh, a nice light tealish blue here. Now you're thinking, well, that, that doesn't look great, right? Well, no, I'm going to set it to multiply. And all right, we're getting a little bit warmer. I think my shadows are a little green, so I'm going to adjust these a little bit. All right, so now what I can do is I can add a mask to my shadows. Now by default, it's not doing anything. Now if I wanted to hide all of these selections while I was clicking in Photoshop, if you hold down Alt or Option and click the mask, it will fill it with a black mask, which in this case is gonna hide all of my shadows, which I don't really want. So. We're just going to create a regular mask. And now I can come in with a brush or a lasso or really anything. And I can start making selections. And I'm just going to make a couple to show you here. And when I fill those with black, it's basically like I'm painting with the light that's underneath this color. Okay. So now that I've got my shadow covering everything, I can paint it away on the mask. So I can come in here. Maybe I want this part to be lit. I'm just going to do this really quick. But I could use a brush for this. You guys see my all my gorgeous rendering here. Uh, I could use a lasso if I wanted to select a lasso and, and fill it with the color like I'm uh, like a like a cut and grad kind of method. If I wanted to uh, make a selection and then switch to like a soft brush, as long as it's black, I can paint it in this way. Or I can go back to white, tone it back down. So instead of painting with shadows or painting in the shadows, you're basically painting in light, especially if you have a piece that is heavily in shadow and you just want to have light in a couple of places. This is a really great way to do that without having to worry about filling in all the shadows. You're basically doing the reverse. You're filling it all in with shadow to begin with and then painting in there with light. And because this is on a separate layer, we can change these colors anytime. So if I decided, man, I wish that was a little bit more red, or I wish it was darker, or I wish it was more saturated, or, or whatever the effect is, I can always go back and add that or change that later. And maybe you prefer to start dark and add light. You know, of course, doing it that way is a way to do that. But let's darken all of my base colors here. And we can do the opposite. I can make a new layer, and we'll fill it with, let's say, a bright orangey color. And let's set that to, let's see what, screen color dodge. Let's just say linear dodge at about 50%. So now, now in this case, I want to paint this light on. I don't want to see all this light right now. So I'm just going to hold down Alt or Option and click the mask button. And now it's it's covered all of that with the black on the mask. So I can come in with white and pick a brush or pick a lasso tool or whatever it is. And I get the same effect. Now I'm painting that light onto the character. And you can see it's affecting all these different colors a little bit differently. So this is a good way to pick a lot of different colors without having to pick a lot of different colors. You know, I've got a different uh, mix from this uh, red to orange here on the face. I've got this kind of deep skin color to a, a brighter skin color. You know, the color mix here is a little bit different. And I can always adjust this opacity after the fact to determine how much of that effect that I want to put on here. This gives you a ton of flexibility in your lighting choices. The last way I'll show you that I use a mask is to control like where a texture or where an image goes as part of uh, my uh, my piece here. So I'm going to just copy a sunset bunch of clouds off of a free website on the internet. And now we've got this nice big cloudy sky. Now this doesn't really fit my image completely, but it's just an example. So I, I've, I've dumped my picture into here and you can see it's affecting everything, which is not what I want. I only want this to be in the background. So all I've got to do is select the background. So in this case, I'm just going to select my foreground and invert it. It's controller command plus shift plus I, letter I, and now it's selected all the background. So all I've got to do now is go down to my layer window where this sky is and click the mask button. And you'll see that now it's only filling in the background. Now I can play around with the layer mode or whatever it is I wanted to do this. This is overlay. And now the sky fits in the background pretty easily. And this is kind of a work in progress color sketch. I'm just playing around with uh, doing kind of a lighting study on this. But let's say that I want to add a texture of some kind to her suit, which I think would probably be overkill, but we're just using this as an example. 
So I found some dragon, reptile, skin, snake stuff. I don't know what this is. And we're just going to drop this onto the canvas. And let's try to get the scale some kind of right here. I would probably take extra care if this was for an actual book. Let's merge all of these mini layers together. I'm going to go down to the flats layer, make a selection, and grab that green color of her suit. Go to the texture and click the mask button. And now we can see this awful texture. So uh, let's see, let's change this to overlay and let's lower the opacity way down. And if you don't think about it too much, it doesn't look too bad. I think it's, like I said, not, 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 a, great, uh, not a great example. You can see the lines in here. I would probably do a better job. And you could also warp these textures into place and make them around the curves and stuff. But it's a really quick way to you know, make those textures fit your canvas and fit the area. Okay, so let's get rid of the texture because it actually doesn't look that great. And <laughs> one last thing I want to show you, and that is how you can use a mask to control where an image is adjusted with an adjustment layer. So let's say, for example, that I want to make a big change to this and I want to I want to add some contrast or I want to make some big color adjustment. So, so let's go down to the adjustment layer and we'll set up a curves adjustment. And I think there's one, then one of the presets is just increase the contrast. There's medium contrast, strong contrast. Uh, and, and this usually make things a little too dark for us uh, overall, but it's a good example. So I'm just going to choose this preset, strong contrast. And now you can see the effect that that has on the image. Be careful with that because it's going to darken some of these darker areas. You might might get a little too dark what you want, but I'm just using this as an example. So let's say, you know what, I like this effect, but it's a little much and I don't really only want it contained to the upper part of her body. Okay, I want to kind of use that contrast to pull your eye forward here. I don't want it affecting everything. Okay, let's just fill this mask with black. So that way the effect goes away. And now I can choose white, and as long as I have the mask selected, I can paint this in to the areas that I want more contrast. Now you can see it's actually affecting the background too. Let's say I don't want that. So I can back this up. We can undo all of this. This time I'm just going to select the foreground. Just control or command click the picture here, which has all of my the contents I want to change. Now I can choose white, and now I can paint this in, get a nice soft round brush. And I can just paint this into the areas I want it to be, which is really just around her head here. And maybe a little bit down here. But it's only affecting now that part of the image. So layer masks are pretty awesome. I will link to another video I did a while back on rendering on masks, as well as some other things I think you guys might want to watch. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.